Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. This video is going to be a bit different from what we normally do on the channel, but recently I was invited out to California for a conference, and while I was getting everything ready, I, uh, you know, kind of started overpacking all of my tech. I was going to be out there for five days, and I definitely needed to make sure I packed everything that I would need for those five days when it comes to my normal job, YouTube, and basically any other thing that I wanted to do that's tech-related including having a little bit of fun in my downtime, be it PC gaming or emulation. And initially, like I mentioned, I started overpacking, and then I thought about it really hard. What exactly do I need and want to carry along with me without, you know, overloading myself? So I kind of whittled everything down, and everything that I took for a week out in California fit inside of this little bag here. So in this video, we're going to take a look at my 2022 tech travel bag. So starting right off with the bag itself, I picked this up on Amazon and I can't attest to how long this thing's going to hold up. I mean, it seems like it's really good quality, but I've only went on one trip with it. It's made by Geek Share. You can pick it up for about $35. And like I mentioned, everything that I needed did fit in here. Plus, I really love the look of it. It's got tons of pockets, and I'm a huge fan of these crossbody or over the shoulder bags. But uh, just keep in mind, Michelangelo is not included with it. So we've got the bag covered, now it's time to move on to what's inside of it. Starting off with the smaller stuff, over here we've got some earbuds. Now these are Black Shark earbuds, personally really like these, and I've always been a big fan of the Pixel Buds, but about four months ago I had a set die on me, at least the left one, I could never revive it, so I did need something else. They sound pretty good, I get really good battery life out of them, and really I only use these when I'm on a plane or a train or something like that. Always carry an extra little USB drive with me. Well, this one's actually a 256 gigabyte SanDisk 3.0. I've also got a heavy duty USB Type-C cable. Everything uses USB Type-C nowadays. This will carry video and up to 120 watts fast charging. Next up, a little more storage. Now you've probably seen these in some of my videos. These things are absolutely amazing. This is a Kingston Data Traveler Max. This is the Type-A version. It's a one terabyte USB flash drive. It's USB 3.2 and it will do up to a thousand megabytes per second. I've also got their USB Type-C version, but these things have been an absolute lifesaver. I love these little drives. I've got three of them right now. I've been using one of them for about eight months. Haven't had it fail on me yet, but uh, yeah, these are definitely worth picking up if you need a little extra storage on the go. Another thing I knew that would come in really handy for charging all my devices up was a power bank or a portable battery. And the one I used on this trip was one that my wife recently picked up for me. It doesn't offer the quickest charge or the highest capacity, but it did work out really well. This one is made by a company called New Wave Toys, and as you can see, it looks just like an old school Walkman. Wireless charging around back. Up top, we've got an LED flashlight, micro USB, USB Type-C, and full-size USB. I just love the look of this. I added it to my Amazon cart, and I didn't realize my wife was going to pick it up for me. Wireless charging on this does up to 10 watts, or you could do 25 out of USB Type-C. And we've also got these Walkman buttons over here. They don't do anything, but they're pretty cool to fidget around with. Originally, I wanted to pick this up so I could throw a Raspberry Pi in it and turn it into kind of an MP3 player, and I might do that down the road, but for now, it does work great as a battery pack. All right, so I've got my bases covered there with some extra storage. We've got some extra battery life and some sound for on the go. Next up, we've got my phone. So this is actually my extra phone. A lot of my viewers already know this, but I personally use an iPhone as my everyday phone. I've just been doing it for years. I'm already very invested in the ecosystem, and I've tried several times to swap over to Android, but I just can't break the cycle. Either way, my regular viewers know that I love Android, and I've also got an Android phone. This is the Pixel 6a, and this might be swapped out for the Pixel 7 Pro if I'm able to get my hands on one. But for now, I've actually really enjoyed using the 6a. Not the most powerful phone, but it does exactly what I needed to do for an Android device. Alright, so moving over to the big pocket. We've got one more adapter here. Now, uh, as a lot of us already know, most laptops and handhelds nowadays use USB Type-C, and we still utilize a lot of devices with full-size USB ports. And basically, it's a USB Type-C dock. We've got USB Type-C in. It's also got two USB 3.0 ports. It's got Ethernet, full-size and micro SD card slots, and HDMI out. We can also charge right through this device, so we've got another USB Type-C input on it. So yeah, it does anything I need this adapter to do. We've got video out, micro SD card, full-size SD card. Everything I need to kind of adapt my USB Type-C to my everyday use case will work with this device. 
So all of that stuff is great, but I really can't do any work on those devices that we just took a look at. So I needed to bring a laptop. And while I was out there, I had to do some work for my real job. So I just opted to use my work laptop. Nothing special here. It's an M1 MacBook Pro with 16 gigabytes of RAM and a 512 gigabyte SSD. Works really well for what I need to do on it, which is mainly Xcode. And uh, you know, I mean, if I wanted to watch some videos on it, it's got a really nice screen, great battery life. And I do have a few emulators installed on this, like the Dolphin emulator for GameCube and Wii and PSP. Both of those run great on the M1 chip. And if you're familiar with these MacBooks, you know that we don't have any kind of full-size USB on these devices. So the adapter that I have, the USB Type-C to USB and HDMI, does work on this. We've got a 3.5 millimeter audio jack over here on the right side and two USB Type-C ports over here. So if I do need to plug anything into this, I'll use that adapter with it. Now initially, I thought about bringing my gaming laptop, but it wouldn't even fit in this small bag. Plus, it's just so big and bulky, you don't get good battery life out of it. But I did want to do some gaming, and personally, I felt like I might need access to Windows for a few applications that I use on a daily basis. I wanted to go with the Steam Deck, but like I mentioned, I thought I might need access to Windows. So I figured I'd go ahead and kill two birds with one stone and use a Windows 11 handheld. So what I chose to bring was the iNeo Next. Now this has an 8 core 16 thread Ryzen 5000 CPU. I've got 2 terabytes of storage and 32 gigabytes of RAM with this unit. It's got a touch screen display. We've got a fingerprint sensor up here and I can connect this to a larger display and just use it like a desktop. So I've got a full fledged Windows 11 PC here. Plus, it's great for gaming on the go. I use this the whole plane ride there and back. And while the iGPU just doesn't have the power that the Steam Deck does, when it comes to CPU performance, this definitely trumps the Steam Deck with that Ryzen 5825U. And personally, I really do love the color scheme of this iNeo Next. We've got that white with the blue accents. I think it looks great. So yeah, there you have it. You know, going into this and being away from the office and studio for a week, I was actually a little worried that I wouldn't have enough stuff to do everything that I needed to do from my main job, YouTube, and just, you know, have a little fun on the side there. But I was able to get by for five days with what you see here. Now, one thing I actually forgot to include was a USB Type-C charger. It's a 100 watt four port charger, so I could charge all of my devices at the same time. And I could also top up the power bank that I brought with me. And you know, this still might seem overkill to some people, but you gotta keep in mind that, you know, all of the work I do is basically online. I had to have this laptop for my main job. I had to have some stuff for YouTube. And I definitely wanted to have a little fun while gaming in my downtime. And this is exactly what I packed in my tech travel bag for 2022. I know this video was a little bit different from what I normally do. I mean, don't expect these all the time. This was actually the first trip I took in about three years. And, you know, I figured I'd go ahead and make a video out of it, given all the thought that was put into everything that I had to carry in this smaller bag. But, you know, if you saw anything in this video that you're interested in, I will leave links in the description. You can pick most of it up on Amazon. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.